guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com. Google finally did it. They made a Nexus tablet. And you know what? This better be good. Let's unbox it. And you know, I say it better be good because every Android tablet that I've tried, with the exception of the Transformer and Transformer Prime, has been horrible. It's been laggy, it's been slow. The app situation for Android tablets is just not good. And there's just not a compelling tablet experience yet for Android, as I said, except for the Transformer Transformer Prime. So Google putting the Nexus brand on the tablet must mean that it's good, or at least we hope that it does. So we're, we're going to unbox this now. And this is the tablet that came from Google I.O. So it's the white one uh, with eight gigabytes. And I don't know if you if you're if you can see this, but they actually made a 7 uh, with the sort of silhouette of the Nexus 7. I didn't really realize that until someone pointed it out to me, but it's kind of a cool touch, uh, and I hope that you agree. Uh, so what's cool about this tablet? Well, two big things in my mind. One, speed and fluidity. It's got Jelly Bean on it, and we've already showed you Android Jelly Bean uh, on the Galaxy Nexus, and we really like what, what we see. It's, it's super fast and fluid. There's just something about it that makes it just respond so well to your touches. And number two, this tablet is thin and light. We're going to compare it to the Galaxy Tab 7.7, .7, which was one of the thinnest, lightest tablets of all time. The seven inch form factor is just super sweet uh, for people that want something that is actually comfortable to hold. A lot of those 10 inch tablets out there, um, and I know I'm talking a lot here, a lot of those 10 inch tablets out there are cumbersome to hold, even the iPad. When we did After the Buzz with the new iPad, that's something that we said. The iPad is thick and heavy. When you're trying to read a book on it or a magazine or newspaper, it's just, uh, it's, it's a pain, it's not comfortable. It doesn't really give you that experience of lightness and of comfort. And so with the Nexus 7, we might actually get that experience because it's so thin and so light, or at least that is what uh, people are saying. So let's take this out of the box. And uh, it's really tight here. There we go. And I really don't care about the accessories, to be honest. Yeah, this is light. And I'm really curious to see if it's light compared to Galaxy Tab 7.7, .7, which is still running Honeycomb, making it useless because it's so laggy. Uh, it'll be upgraded to ice cream sandwich in the summer. Thanks, Samsung. Come on, guys. Uh, so let's see if it is heavier. It's tough to tell here, but definitely, actually, I'd say the Nexus 7 is lighter, but definitely thicker. Let's get this plastic wrap off. That's no fun. And those of you watching this at home that have pre-ordered the Nexus 7 might be a little disappointed that you don't get the white version. But you know what, guys? This white cover is just that. It's a backing. It's a cover. When you get your black uh, Nexus 7 from the pre-order, I'm going to bet you that there's going to be a lot of third-party sites that will sell this white backing, or at least you can paint it, or there will be ones with different decals or colors. But this is just a backing, so it's not like it goes all the way around the device, you have to disassemble it. This is just a simple backing, and darn, this is nice. Uh, I love the dimples here. This has a rubbery texture, and it just feels good in the hand. Uh, definitely not slippy, slippery, but definitely a little bit thick, actually, and I'm surprised by that. And if you look next to the 7.7, .7, you can definitely see what I'm talking about. Um, it is it is probably 30% thicker, but a little bit lighter. So that kind of makes up for it. Uh, so a few things of note here. We're going to actually turn it on while we talk about it here. Now this has a Tegra 3 chip, and I'm really skeptical uh, about the Tegra 3 chip because on the One X, on the uh, Acer Iconia A700, the One X or not the One X, the Tegra 3 just doesn't perform that well. It does a great job with gaming, don't get me wrong, but in terms of fluidity of the operating system, it just hasn't impressed me. And hopefully, hopefully, since this is a Nexus device, it's going to be good enough. Plus the combination of Jelly Beam should have a winning combination. So let's just look at the hardware, kind of uh, get a chance to get some first impressions here. Just a flat piece of glass on the front, kind of a really large lens there for the front facing camera. Thank goodness they didn't put a rear-facing camera on the Nexus, because that would have just increased the price, made it thicker, and no one uses the rear-facing camera on a tablet anyway. Looks like we have a pretty pre predominant speaker grill. Uh, this is made by Asus, of course. Asus is doing an awesome job with tablet, uh, it seems. As I mentioned, the Transformer, Transformer Primer, two of the best Android tablets, or the only best Android tablets. We've got the, uh, the power button over there in the upper right corner, kind of Samsung style, uh, and then we've got the volume rocker. Got a microphone here. This will be fun to use Skype on this. 
We've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the bottom and uh, the micro SD, micro USB on the bottom. Really liking this white, I gotta, I gotta say, really dig it, um, really nice. So let's turn on the screen and welcome. Okay, that's exciting. Select Wi-Fi. I'm gonna get this hooked up, I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back and I plugged in my Google ID, so it's starting to pull some content uh, based on movie recommendations. This tablet is all about content. Uh, it shows some, some magazines that I've recently looked at. You know, in, in a lot of ways, this tablet is made for two kinds of people. One, it's made for what we call the Grammy group. People that want things just to work, that's easy to use, that's simple. I could give this to my mom and I feel like she'd have a pretty good experience on it. She'd read some books, she'd watch, look at some magazines, watch some videos. Uh, the other group of people that this is intended for is the power user, which is very interesting because usually you don't get the Grammy group and the power user uh, to get happy from the same device. The reason I say that this is good for the power user because it's a Nexus device. It's going to be fast and just moving around I can tell you that it's pretty darn fast. We're going to have more tests later, but also it's going to be easy to unlock. There's going to be a lot of great development work on this tablet, uh, and so we're really going to see uh, this tablet shine. So the, the $199 price point for the 8 gigabyte model and the $249 price point for the 16 gig model is just super sweet. I just want to go into the web browser and poke around for a few minutes uh, while, we, while we film the rest of this video. Accept and continue. Uh, sure, sign in. And of course, Chrome Sync is pretty cool. So we're going to go to pocketnow.com. And one thing that I have to say uh, is that 7 inch tablets are very conducive to portrait typing. And that's really important because a lot of tablets are very difficult to type on, uh, especially when you're in the landscape keyboard. It's just, it's huge, and you can't use your fingers. Uh, but here on the Nexus 7, it's the perfect size to type in portrait, even if you have small hands like me. So this will be great for emailing, uh, great for inputting text. All right, so here we are. Screen looks very nice, by the way. It's not amazing. Uh, it's 1280 by 800, so that gives it a DPI of like 214. Uh, as a comparison, the Transformer Prime TF700, the one with the higher res screen, is around 230, uh, and then the iPad 3 is 260. Uh, so, so there's definitely a difference there. Um, but you know, they had to keep the price down somehow. So we're trying to go on a landscape. Hello, maybe landscape lock is on. We'll have to check for that. Let's flick down the page. Very smooth, uh, just like we saw on the Galaxy Nexus. Web browsing performance is very good. And you know, the, the animation for the multitask UI is gone. It's just there. There really aren't any apps open, actually. Let's open a couple of things. Just kind of try to overwhelm it, I guess. Just open up a ton of apps. And none of these are in memory right now, so they're just kind of like, you know, loading slowly. And we'll open a book, the Nexus 7 guidebook. Look at this pretty page animation. Okay, let's go to the multitask UI. So no animation anymore. Boom, it just pops right open. It's a lot faster than it used to be. So a lot of cool stuff with this tablet, a lot of cool stuff that we're going to do and talk about in future videos. Uh, this might be the best tablet that has ever come to Android. In fact, it probably is just by virtue of the price being so low. Packing a quad-core CPU with a gig of RAM. Pretty nice screen, by the way. Uh, let's see, can you see pixels on the... Can you focus? Can you see pixels? Yeah, I can. Uh, but, you know, you hold a tablet not right up to your face like you would a phone, so that doesn't matter as much. Anyway, a lot of talking, but this tablet's really cool. Very excited about it, uh, and we're going to have a lot more coming up on it. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, and thanks for watching. That's it for now.